guys, we're live. It's Jessica, the Fray Family Coach. And you know what? I forgot to do something. Give me just one second. One second. get rid of some noise. All right. Hey guys, Jessica, the furry family coach. Thank you so much for joining me in this video. Um, I have been going over some notes from people that attended the AFCO um, meeting earlier this week. Um, Susan Thixton of the Truth About Pet Food, Dr. Judy Morgan, um, who is a world renowned veterinarian. Um, Dr. Judy Morgan actually said she was the only practicing veterinarian in the room. How freaking amazing is that? This is a meeting discussing pet food and one veterinarian out of the entire country was there. That's amazing to me. Anyway, so I just wanted to recap what happened from all of the notes I read from um, watching Dr. Judy Morgan talk about the AFCO meeting, some of the main bullet points and what you need to know as a pet parent, as somebody who is feeding their pets. Um, as many of you know, I am a huge proponent for feeding fresh foods. Um, I, you know, 10, 15, 20 years ago, I didn't know any better. I was feeding kibble. I want to talk about the um, bullet points from the this this week's AFCO meeting, August 2019. Um, so Susan Thixton, the truth about pet food, my goodness, isn't she just an amazing woman? If you don't know who Susan Thixton is, Google her or go to the truth about pet food dot, dot com. I think it's dot com. Dot, dot com. It's dot com. <laughs> so many of these things are dot org and I get confused. Anyway, truth about pet food. Truth about pet food dot com. Um, absolutely amazing information. It will rock your world if you're feeding kibble. Um, be prepared, but know that you're going to learn some really amazing stuff. Okay, so takeaways from, I've got my notes over here. <laughs> takeaways from the AFCO meeting because I wasn't there. Goodness knows I wish I was there, but they charge $500 a head to get in the door. Um, this information should be public knowledge. Uh, not only do they charge $500 a head just to get into the door to attend a meeting, to get access to the definitions of pet food ingredients, they charge you $120. Wow. They don't want you to know what's in pet food. Sounds like to me. Anyway, okay, <laughs> before we get started, don't forget to grab your copy of my book, Seven Miracle Steps to Get Your Dog to Obey Commands. Guys, if you have never had a dog before, if this is your first dog, if this is if you're if you've had dogs all your life, grab your copy of this book it's gonna rock your world. I put a link in the description. I don't know if that's up or down or sideways, but I put a link in the description, grab your copy. Okay, so let's get into some of these bullet points. First bullet point, if you feed any, if any of the pet food you feed contains any pork, pork meat, pork organ meat, pork meal, any pork anything, Contact the manufacturer and ask them the country of origin for the pork that is in that product. Something we did not know prior to this AFCO meeting and AFCO knew it and hasn't really released any of this information apparently until this AFCO meeting is that there is a huge outbreak in China of um, African swine fever. So, so much of the pork that are that is going into your pet food is coming from China. And guess what? They're having massive outbreaks of African swine fever, and this could be contaminating your pet food. So if you have anything, look at the ingredient label on whatever you're feeding to your pet. If it contains pork, contact the manufacturer and ask for the country of origin. If it's coming from China, you got a problem, stop feeding it. Um, 
there's still so much to talk about and there is still so much misinformation being given out from AFCO, from the FDA. This, all of this information is being trickled down to your veterinarian. So your veterinarian is getting misinformation regarding the DCM issue, dilated cardiomyopathy. Um, so many pet foods and it seems to be predominantly linked to grain-free pet foods. 90% of the um, pet foods implicated have grain-free on the label and the other 10% are primarily vegan and vegetarian pet foods. First of all, there is no reason to be feeding vegan and vegetarian pet foods. Even if your pet has some serious allergies, there are other alternatives. 100% I implore you to contact Answers Pet Food because they use fermented foods. When you ferment anything, it changes the molecular structure of, for in this instance, a protein. So um, they have really amazing success rates with dogs who previously were on a um, certain type of protein that they have been deemed sensitive or allergic to and then they are um, fed that same protein in the answers formula because it's fermented and they do amazing on it so the dcm issue so much misinformation out there guys i am such a huge proponent of feeding fresh food but not just feeding fresh food feeding a balanced biologically appropriate species specific diet. If you have any questions about how to do that, comment below. I will be happy to help you out with that. Um, okay, vitamin D excesses. We kind of have pushed this aside a little bit because the DCM issue has been so big, but vitamin D excesses are still happening. In fact, um, the biggest kibble uh, vitamin D excess was in 2018, but wet foods were huge in vitamin D excesses at the beginning of this year, the for almost the first half of this year in 2019. So the vitamin D excesses are still a problem and it seems to be an issue with the premixes. Again, premixes are coming from China. And the reason pet food manufacturers use premixes is because the proteins that they're putting in your pet food are processed so heavily that there is little to no nutrition left in them. So they had to have to add synthetic nutrition back in and that's where these premixes come into play. These premixes are coming from China and often are not tested prior to use by your pet food manufacturer. So that's why all of these problems are occurring. That's why we're seeing um, excesses in vitamin D causing issues in our pets. I mean, there's so much, so much wrong with these premixes. Um, to begin with, once again, why I urge people to feed a balanced fresh food diet. Um, so that was a, a topic of concern uh, also at the AFCO meeting earlier this week. Um, oh goodness, Dr. Judy Morgan, my goodness. I just love her so much. I'm so glad she was at this AFCO meeting and she goes to most AFCO meetings. Um, she actually got up and spoke and they were talking about prescription diets. So here's the thing. When you go to your veterinarian and they have a pers they they have, you know, a stock of prescription diets in their office, chances are it's either going to be a Royal Canin line or um, a Hills line of prescription diets. Uh, and, and generally that's because of whatever veterinary school they went to. Um, veterinarians are not well versed in nutrition. Um, they typically get one uh, one course throughout their uh, college education in veterinary school about nutrition. And depending on what college they go to, that's either sponsored by Royal Canin or it's sponsored by Hills. So that nutrition education is either being given to them by one of the two big main pet food manufacturers, one, one or two of the, the few big main pet food manufacturers. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let me get a drink of water. I'm talking too much. Hmm. Okay. Sorry about that. So when you go to your veterinarian's office, you're going to probably see either a line of Royal Canin prescription foods or a line of Hills prescription foods. And here's the thing with prescription foods. First of all, what was brought up at the AFCO meeting is that there is absolutely no difference 
in standards for regular pet foods and prescription pet foods. So they're held to the exact same standards. So there's nothing special, nothing re extra regulatory about a prescription pet food. Um, and what Dr. Judy Morgan went up to the podium and spoke on, she said, as a practicing veterinarian, and like I said earlier, apparently she was the only practicing veterinarian at this AFCO meeting. Um, so as a practicing veterinarian, she said, let me read what she said. She said she could not have confidence in any product that's treated like a drug, but not held to any requirements of a drug, meaning that these prescription diets um, have absolutely no regulation on them. They don't go through any drug trials. The FDA doesn't approve them. They're not tested on animals prior to coming out to the public. Um, so they basically have absolutely no drug trials and are being sold as drug, right? So there's, so you, your veterinarian is saying, um, you need this prescription. I'm going to have to write you a prescription for this food that is going to help heal your pet. And it's not. So basically it's treated like a drug and there are no requirements of a drug attached to it. So there are no trials for a drug. Um, that, that you would for, think of, you know, when a, a drug goes through formal trials with the FDA, it goes through years of trials and research and it's tested on, you know, different animals and you have to have certain, um, you, have, you have to prove that whatever formulation you have in that drug is going to help with X. So say, you know, kidney disease, that this drug is going to help with kidney disease. There are there are no trials at all in prescription foods. So um, that was brought up at the AFCO meeting. However, we have no idea if, if they're gonna do anything about this or not. It was just brought up there. Um, the next bullet point is that, I guess they, they poll consumers about different things on pet food labels. And one of the biggest things that came out and apparently always comes out at these AFCO meetings is that consumers have no idea what meat meal is. So if you're reading your pet food label, and I know I've done videos about this in the past, but if you're reading your pet food ingredient label and it says chicken meal or beef meal or turkey meal, salmon meal, anything that's meal, what that means is that they take a product, you start with a product, it's some resemblance of beef. Let's say we're, we're gonna go with beef for this example, okay? It's some resemblance of beef. And, and by the way, it could be, um, you know, leftover carcasses that cannot be sold for human, any type of meat that cannot be sold for human consumption, anything that's too old, to be sold for human, human consumption, animals that die of disease, animals that are euthanized, um, all of that is suitable, according to AFCO, for pet food. So they take whatever that beef product is and they render it down using high heat processing. And I think there's like four different processes that it goes through, so each time each rendering process removes nutrients from the original product. So it's rendered down and what you wind up with at the, at the end of all these processes, you wind up with this like powder substance. Um, it's a dry powder. So by the time you get to this end result, which is this dry powder, there's little to no nutrition left in that protein source. Um, the reason that most kibble uh, and, and big pet food manufacturers use meat meal is because it's shelf stable. So they don't have to refrigerate it. There are no, they can, you know, put it on a train and drive it across the United States if they want to. And it's not going to go bad because it's a dry product at this point. Um, kind of like if you were to just go get a, you know, a a flower out of the pantry that's kind of what it looks like except it's brown um, because it was a protein to begin with so and it hasn't been bleached they, to my knowledge they don't bleach it 
I don't see why they would bleach it. <laughs> but anyway, so that's what meat meal is. And there's little to no nutrition left at the end of these rendering processes to get it to this dry form. And that's why they have to add all the synthetic nutrients, those premixes we were talking about at the beginning of the video. That's why they have to add all these synthetic nutri nutrients back into the product because they take a protein source and they render it and high heat process it so much that there's no nutrition left in it. So they have to add back in that nutrition. So um, that was kind of discussed again, that consumers have no idea what they're reading when they read the ingredients list of a pet food label. Um, and then the final bullet point that I wanted to mention from everything I've read over regarding this uh, August 2019 AFCO meeting um, is that manufacturers are inflating their meat percentages by adding water to dry ingredients. So they'll take something like that meat meal, say it was beef, so let's just say we have beef meal, and they add water back into it. And they say, now that weight with the water added back in, that's where they're going to take their percentage from. So if they put, you know, 50% or 60% meat on the label, it's an inf it's it's actually an inflated uh, percentage because they've added water back into it so that they can say on the label that is 50% or 60% meat in this product. Um, so that's kind of the bullet points that were discussed at the app. There were a couple of more, couple more, but these were the ones that really stood out to me that I wanted to let you guys know about because this is important. As a pet parent, don't you want to know what's in the food you're feeding your pets? Of course we do. That's why it's important to follow these things and learn about these things and educate ourselves. So I just wanted to discuss that with you. I also put a couple of links. Um, one to uh, Truth About Pet Food, Susan Fixton, her blog on her recap of the AFCO meeting, and another one to um, a video by Dr. Judy Morgan, which was her recap of the AFCO meeting. Just so you can see where I'm getting all this information from, I'm not making it up. <laughs> um, even though I didn't get to go and I really wish I could have, I wanted to bring this information to you guys. So that's the video for today. Thank you so much for joining me. I, um, I'm just grateful that you guys are here and that um, you're giving me a platform to talk to you on. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and end this video. Thank you so much again for being here. Don't forget to leave your comments below and I will see you in the next video. Hey, thanks for watching. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you never miss another video.